Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News NHL Team Preview Show. As you can see behind me, we are going to be previewing the Colorado Avalanche today. I am Joe Borick of Sports Fanatic News and SteelFlyers.com, joined by Pirlo Wisdom of SteelFlyers.com as well. How are you doing this evening, Pirlo? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I think we're all doing great hockey soon around the corner, coming back on the 13th. It is a Christmas season, so what could be better? Merry Christmas Eve to everyone out there. And we're getting into the Western Division, and it's a team that I think most people think will be at the top of the division in the Colorado Avalanche. They, of course, finished last year a whopping 22 games above 500 at 42, 20, and 8 with a 657 win percentage. Uh, they were top six in the league in offensive and defensive category. Um, the one thing that did struggle, though, last year that I think bringing in an experienced guy like Brandon Saad, um, which is a question I was going to pose to you, as well as having a guy like Nachushkin and Morton Kaut potentially come in, who I know you like, was the power play. So do you think the additions of an experienced guy like Saad, a youngster like Kaut, and others will potentially help their power play? I mean, it can't hurt. Uh, I I think just about anybody is perplexed why this team would have difficulties. Yeah, exactly. On power <laughs> play. To begin with, like, yeah, uh, if I knew the answer to why they're to, to their solving their power play problems, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now, uh, except for the fact that it just seems like they were incredibly unlucky. Uh, they seemed to get lots of shots towards the net. Everything was fine that way. Maybe overplayed it a bit. Um, hard to say. But a guy like Brandon Saad will certainly help. I guess you could say, and this is kind of the way Brandon Saad plays, is that you know they didn't really have that guy to go to in front of the net. Although Gabriel Landeskog doesn't do that guy. bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. That's... That's really all I gotta say about that. I mean, if that's if this lineup, if the, your biggest problem is your power play, it's probably gonna work itself out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's definitely gonna work itself out. I mean, JT Comper emerges a very adequate, uh, especially a very good third line center. He could potentially be if he continues to develop like he did last year. Show the potential to even be on your second line, but he's definitely gonna be. Uh, starting on their third with McKinnon as the top line and then Kadri likely as the second to start. Um, but they have a good young team with even much young infusion coming in in uh, Connor Timmons. And if you believe uh, Morton Cow is going to make the team as well. So what do you think of their young prospect core in the Byrams, the Couch, the Timmons of the world? And who do you think has a chance to actually make this stacked Colorado roster this year? Well, from what I saw from Martin Cout, he would be making most rosters this year. Um, the thing is, it's going to be very difficult to penetrate this roster. And that's the only thing that may prevent him and keep him in the minors this year, is that if he doesn't make the team, he's got to be in a bubble-type scenario where, or the taxi squad where he's not playing and Colorado's not going to like that. So he's going to have to outright make the team, as would it be with all of the players that you just mentioned. Um, the, the one, though, that I think for sure is going to make it after what I saw in the playoffs from him is Connor Timmons. I think Connor Timmons will play um, for sure. I, 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 I think he'll play. Uh, if worse comes to worse, they'll put Ian Cole on the taxi squad He's been around long enough that he can sit there and get paid his money and be uh, a good, still a great leader and not pout about it and all of those things like that. That's what's so wonderful about a guy like Ian Cole is he's uh, low maintenance. He'll do whatever he's asked. So that would be my guy. Uh, Byram, I think, is going to have another year. And uh, was there another one you mentioned there? Uh, no, that's all. That's all I mentioned yeah. uh, in there. But, uh, yeah, I think um, that's a good assessment. I do think uh, Cout might also be a little bit more blocked with the addition of the veteran uh, cup-winning side because when you look at the game he plays, he plays his uh, way of going into the trenches, the dirty areas. So unless if they want to have more than one guy like that in their lineup, 
side addition could potentially make it so they'll let him grow one more season when the NHL se- or excuse me, AHL season potentially kicks off uh, and have the $5 million side just fall off the books after this year and then have him kind of fall into place next year. They have different decisions they could make there. Um, it's also going to obviously depend on how guys, they have Andre Burakovsky and Tyson Yost for the team. I think the reason Cal might make the team this year is more to have a security blanket for Yost, and then he could start on the fourth line main because he is a power forward. And then if Yost doesn't perform, I think that's where he would move up to the third line. Yeah, you could put that's Pierre. Mar- you could put Calvert in the on the taxi squad and put Cout in there. I just have a feeling that he. I think he's going to have to beat out Donskoy. If he beats out Donskoy, then he's going to get top nine minutes, and it's worth him being there. So I think he's yeah. going to have to be- Or Yost, because if he beats out one of those two, those are the two bubble guys that are still good players. I think Donsko is more of a proven guy than Tyson Yost at this point of their career. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, but moving in now to the uh, Avalanche, I know we asked this in all the other videos, there's a couple others I had you on, where for them, there's really nothing, I don't think, when we asked the question, but is there anything for this team that you look at and think, eh, they could have improved that a little bit more? I don't think so. <laughs> is there <laughs> maybe goalie, but other than that? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think maybe I, and somewhere down the road here, you're going to ask me what could go horribly wrong with them, but where, where could they have improved on? Gosh, you're right. It's been very difficult. It's very difficult to find anything, and that's about what I would I would say is probably going. I mean, Philip Grubauer has had his just constant been an injury. Problem. Injuries, yeah. When he's yeah. healthy, he's been good. Yeah, he's been okay, but those injuries uh, really start piling up and affects the game overall. That could be a difficulty, but there, I don't know if there was anything they could much do about it. Uh, so they had to kind of roll with it. Uh, Pavel, Pavel Francis had a great regular season. Nah, looked pretty shaky in the playoffs. And uh, a little bit shaky in the playoffs. I wouldn't say pretty shaky. I suppose they could have went and got a more experienced third goaltender uh, to put in the bubble. Uh, as it stands now, I do believe that the whoever's in the taxi squad would be better served. That'd be Adam Werner, I think, would probably be better served playing rather than being in the taxi. But that's probably fairly fixable on the waiver wire or what have you. So it's not that big of a deal. That would be about it. Their goaltender depth, I have to agree that. Besides that, I don't know what more you could have did with this roster. Oh, my gosh. That's why. Roster. That's why I completely agree with you. I think that's it because Gruby, when he was in, he only played 36 games due to help, but he did have a 916 still, which is nothing to laugh about. Uh, that's a pretty good save percentage. Uh, and a 263 goals against, which is actually a pretty solid right in the middle twos. Um, and they played around the same amount of games. Francois at a 241 and a 923. So I think they do have a very good tandem. It's more. The goalie depth, I think, could be the only thing you could point to because if one guy goes down, uh, that could be a little bit concerning for Colorado compared to some other teams around the league. But I think there are other assets in their offense and defense will be able to man the fort enough that it won't be as big of a thing for if it's only a one-week or two-week span. But I think I think Sapik's smart enough as well. It's so smart, not smart enough. He is so in looking forward and looking ahead that he has his eye on Crawford down the road in New Jersey. I don't think Crawford's going to stay in New Jersey there at the deadline. That he's going to move somewhere, and I could see it being Colorado. Bringing in a guy like Brandon Saad will help that along, if things, depending on the way things go with the goaltending up until that point. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think Colorado, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we probably both think they're going to be at the top of this uh, Western division because they built the team well. They have a very good top nine, really, on offense. Um, And then they now added, just for the heck of it, I guess, to make it even harder on everybody in the West, added Kevin (laughs) Keyes to their defense. Uh, 
uh, that already has Connor Timmons coming up, who only reason he was delayed coming up was his concussion syndrome. So as long as he can stay healthy, he should be a hell of a defenseman. Next year, you got Byron coming up. Cole's your taxi squad guy. I mean, they're just blessed with riches. Um, so do you believe also uh, that they're going to be the top team in this Western division? I, I'd be very surprised if they're not. It's not a very strong division to begin with. And like you said, they, I, I mean, even right down to the fact that every one of their defense pairings are left and right defensemen. Every single one of them. They got RD, left, LD, RD, LD, RD, LD. Like, yeah. Sakic is so precise in everything he does. He's a very precision general manager. He's been brilliant to watch. Yeah, they got so much younger guys, too. Graves is still in his mid-20s. McCarr's obviously in his early 20s going to get his uh, first contract restricted after this year. Um, and then you got Samuel Gerard uh, hitting his contract only at 22 years old uh, this year with the veteran Eric Johnson. So, yeah, they, they do have it all uh, made. So I think this is going to be a very quick question that we'll just move on to how everything's going to fall into place for them. But if it, something will somehow go wrong for this team, uh, how do you think that could happen? <laughs> they would have And Landeskog has been known to be on the shelf because uh, of basically the way he plays. Um, Andre Burakovsky had a good, strong year, but, I mean, he's been inconsistent. He, if he goes back to his inconsistent ways... Um, and uh, let's say McKinnon f gets injured the first game. Uh, Grubauer and Francois either get injured or um, show the the show that they're not what they can be. Especially Grubauer getting injured, you know, they they could make things difficult here for them in that way to a certain extent. Uh, but even if all of those things happen, I think they could probably still make the playoffs or so deep. But there are, like any team, issues that could pop up. Uh, I think the biggest thing is if Grubauer gets injured like he wants to do and Pavel Francouz has to do it on his own and Werner, they can't find a goaltender to help him out, that could get him so they you know, maybe, maybe have a come fourth in the division or something like that. Yeah, that's the only way I think they fall off myself as well. Because uh, for you, I think uh, McKinnon is going to be the reason I believe they'll be good. And then I'll shoot it uh, to you is one of the final things for uh, why you think all could go well. Is McKinnon's going to continue to, I think, become a more each year right there with McDavid in the Hart Trophy can race each year as long as he stays on the ice. Uh, McCarr could intentionally come more and more into being a Norris guy as time comes on. Now you have the youngster Timmons, who, like I said, the only reason he hasn't been up yet, he probably would have been up sooner last year if it wasn't for concussions. So as long as he stays healthy, I think he's going to be a beast. Graves really emerged last year. They got Gerard. Um, I think they just really have a great stack defense to go with a stacked offense. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche could potentially be the deepest team in the league, let alone the West division. So that's why I feel they're going to have good success uh, this year. And that's why they will be at the top of the division. But what for you would be the reasons you think all could go right uh, for this team or will go right? Well, if nobody gets injured and, and uh, Landis Gog, McKinnon, or Ranton and continue in their torrid pace that they have before, Andre Burakovsky has a shot that can give you 30 goals even if he's not trying, seriously. like he's, he, If he puts out a full effort as we know he can and he puts it all together with uh, Kadri and Saad comes in with that, uh, you know, the, uh, the two cups, that I believe he has two cups, I believe, or is it one? Uh, I don't know. But that, that having that cup in the room will be huge for them. And then Tyson Jost takes a step up. JT Comfer, I love. He, if On most teams, JT Comfer would be pushing for, uh, you know, maybe even the number one spot on a lot of teams. He certainly would be a second-line center. And uh, 
So if all of those things go right, and there's a very good chance they are, not to mention Connor Timmons shows like he did in the playoffs. Samuel Gerrard is only 22 years old, yeah. one of the best two-way defensemen in the league right now, most underrated at least. Makar steps up even more if that's possible. My gosh, Norris Trophy caliber. And Ryan Graves just keeps on being the solid defensive defenseman that he is. Devin Taves uh, is keeps on growing into his position that he has over the last little while. This team could be the President's Trophy and Stanley Cup for sure, no doubt about it. And I think that uh, there's far more chance of this what I just talked about happening than the – than bad things happening for this team. For sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. I one hundred percent concur with that. I, we, I didn't even mention Eric Johnson coming back from yeah. his injury. Like, like crazy, dude. What what depth is just stupid. Yeah, the, they're a team um, that really they only lost departures of guys they could afford to lose. They lost guys like Zadorov, Namesnikov, uh, Wilson. Not uh, bad players, just players they didn't need on their team anymore. And that, because especially with the emergence of Timmons, uh, they so he signed another young guy in Dennis Gilbert. And knowing Colorado, they probably somehow make him into a decent six defenseman. Um, so they they just bring in good guys, and they're already at least eight deep, pretty much on defense. Because you figure McCarr, Gerard, Taze, Graves, Johnson. Uh, Cole, Timmons, if worse comes to worse, you would probably go Gilbert before you went Byram, but then you could go Byram, so you could argue nine deep. So, yeah, they're they're all set. I think Francois, uh, a second season is really when you're going to see him more emerge because he had to adjust to the NHL from the KHL. He's an older guy. I think he's going to be one of those guys where the 30s are his golden years since he came over so late. And you'll see him start coming into his prime this year. And if Grubauer can stay healthy, he's put up decent numbers in Colorado. I think he could have his best year with this defense that they have organized. So for me, um, being the middle mark is uh, 28 games, I would have to say uh, Colorado is somewhere in the high 30s at least. Uh, they're they could be mid high, like they'll be one of the best teams. They could be the president's trophy, uh, team wherever that will get them. If that's in the 40s, and that'll be in the 40s, it depends how competitive the divisions will be for who where the president's trophy is at in only a 56 game season. If teams get to the mid to high 30s, I think that's where they'll be. If teams get to the 40s, I th to 40 wins, I think they'll be able to compete with that team as well. If with especially if it's a team out of their division because they're in the easier division. So yeah. either way, I put them as right up there, top team to be contending for the president's trophy. And they even got like Alex Newhook could make a lot of teams this year. They probably won't yes. make their shoes. <laughs> Like, it's just insane. Uh, the, the drafting has been absolutely incredible. Uh, the they, 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 don't see, they just don't seem to do anything right. What's that? The kid, the one kid they draft is playing in the juniors right now, Hellison, the other defenseman they picked up uh, either this year or last year. I can't remember, but he's playing in the juniors right now. So they have – they got a lot of guys for the three, four years out and a lot of guys that are going to be coming up next year, so – they barely missed on – we just talked about Martin Kaut, who was a late first. We talked about Newhook now, who looks like he's going to be fantastic. Uh, Connor, they barely missed on any of their freaking draft picks or anything. It's They just can't stop rolling. Luke Fowdy's a pretty good long-term Yeah, yeah, Fowdy, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this is just a team that got it figured out. So are you so you agree uh, you think they're going to be right there for the President's Trophy as one of the top teams in the league, let alone their division? Can't see why they wouldn't be. I'd be very surprised if they're not. Yeah, for sure. Well, there you go, uh, Colorado Avalanche fans. you got to love us, too, since we predicted you as either the best or second-best team probably in the NHL. 
Uh, this has been the Sports Fanatic News NHL Team Preview Colorado Avalanche Edition. I was joined by the wonderful Pirlo Wisdom, where you can follow him and get his information on SteelFlyers.com, as well as Pirlo's NHL Pal on Twitter. You can get my information on SteelFlyers.com, as well as follow me on Twitter at JJBorick26. Have a great, safe, and pleasant Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and peace out.